Hi there, it's James Harter here. I hope you're all doing well. So today I wanted to talk about the mix bus. I'm going to take you through my mix bus chain, all the plugins that are included on there. And I want to talk about why I think it's important that you have one too. Okay, stick around. Let's have a look. Now it wouldn't be a YouTube without this little annoying bit here. So if you do like the video, please hit the like. If you like to subscribe to the channel, then hit subscribe below. And also if you want some free stuff, sign up to the main list below and I'll send you some stuff that you can use in your mixes. So firstly, why do I have a whole bunch of plugins on my mix bus? When I first started out mixing, the main thing I learned from the beginning is keep it clean, don't have anything on there. Don't have any compression, don't have any EQ. You just want it to be as clear as possible and then you'll leave all of the work at the end to the mastering engineer. Now, some of that is still true. Yes, you do leave work for the mastering engineer. But what you also want to do is you want to keep some coherence to your mix as you're going along. I do have a little bit of mix bus compression on there, just a small amount, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, I find it's important to have it on there because firstly, it does help to glue the mix together. It gives it definitely some more coherence, like I was saying. But also, you don't want to send us off to a mastering engineer only for them to actually do a fair amount of compression because you've not done any on the mix bus at all and then find that your mix actually sounds totally different. Having the processing on the mix bus does just help to glue things together. It helps to give the high end a little bit more sheen. It gives a, it gives a low end a little bit more control. And I'm gonna show you all of the individual elements that I put on the mix bus to try and achieve this. So let's jump in and we'll have a look and see what I do. Now, firstly, you can see how I've actually set this up in Pro Tools. Now, this won't be the case with all DAWs because some of them work in a slightly different way. Now, the, the Pro Tools master bus is actually pre-fader. So generally, I don't put any plugins on that. I use it as a means to bring down the entire mix if I need to. So for example, if everything is getting a little bit too hot going into these plugins, which is on the main mix bus chain, I can bring it down here and it's gonna preserve everything that I've got going on in my mix. Now, there's a bunch of different mixing engineers that do it in this way, but this particular method I actually totally just stolen from Andrew Sheps. It makes a lot of sense and it really works for me too. Chris Lord Algae does it in a slightly different way. He does it with two auxiliary channels. Um, but I, I like using a master channel. It doesn't make a huge lot of difference, really. But the main thing is it's turning down the whole level before it gets to these plugins. Now, this auxiliary is now my actual mix bus. This is where I have my chain of plugins. And then from that, that goes to an audio track. It could also be a bus if you like, but it goes to an audio track. And that's where I'll either print my mix or just bounce through the bus. Either way, it essentially does the same job. But it, what, what it does mean is if I have to, I can always turn down my mix afterwards just before it actually goes to bounce so bringing down this auxiliary fader this is now post fader it's going to take everything after all of the plugins now this can be important for lots of reasons but one of them might be even as simple as if you're trying to do a fade if you're doing a fade out in a song now you know we don't really have those as much these days the the 80s was a was quite a long time ago um but if you're doing if you're doing that if you do a fade out with the master, it's gonna be adjusting the level before it hits a plugin. So therefore, if you've got a compressor which is doing a fair bit of work, or maybe even a limiter, it's gonna totally change the, the, the sound of your mix because it means that it's not gonna be hitting a compressor as hard as it was. And even though at this point, the song would be at its peak because it's at its peak and when it's just about to be going down. And then therefore, it's gonna totally change the tone of your song. So you need that to be post fader. So so it is just turning the, the level down of the overall mix after all of the plugins. So that's why it's set up in that way. So I'm going to run through what I have on this mix bus chain. A bunch of the ideas I've essentially stolen from different mixing engineers and I've just put them all together and made it my own. So it's a, it's a little bit of a raggy doll or an amalgamation of ideas essentially. So to start off, I've just got a little bit of console emulation. It's just to give the mix just a little bit of color, just a little bit of vibe. And 
you'll notice with this one and in fact with all of them really it's doing such a small amount but the accumulation of all the plugins together that's what actually really does the job and, and really what you want to make sure you're doing is not pushing any of these plugins too much you want to just be giving them just a little bit of tickle just to add a little bit of vibe from each one so let's hear a little bit of what this is doing and um, as it's as it's set at the moment i'm not even doing anything on the input or output but i'll occasionally adjust this if i if i need to just to maybe give it just a little bit more vibe then then i'll adjust it just so it's so it's doing that but as it stands let's have a little listen and just see what's happening this is without So as you can see, that's not really doing very much at all. There's just a little bit of tightening on the low end, and there's just a little bit of uh, a little bit of color in the top end, maybe, but not very much at all. Right. Next up, this one I totally stole off Andrew Sheps. So we've got an EQ, and it's just doing a couple of little functions. So we've got a tiny little bit of stereo width, so it's just adding just a little bit more to the sides. This be very very careful with it because as soon as you get into stereo wideners, especially if you get a little bit excited about it, it can sound fantastic initially but it can also totally screw up your mix it can throw up a whole load of phasing issues and you can end up listening to your song on certain systems and all the guitars are gone or or just the information in the sides is, is completely messed up so just be really careful with that so all i'm doing on here is a tiny little bit of stereo width as you can see it's 111 percent kind of worked for me it's just a small amount and then also on the sides here and specifically on the sides not in the middle there's just a little bit of a lift around eight K just to give it just a little bit more air but as I said that's just on the side so this this plugin is actually in mid side mode um, additionally on here this is something that I stole from Michael Brower he's uh, not a fan of 300 Hertz he thinks it's quite a muddy frequency so I'm dipping just a touch out there on the sides that's about 346 fine all fair all fairly wide and that's on the sides and I, I've got a, a similar thing going on this is about 315 in the middle and that's literally minus 0.5 db so minus 0.5 minus 0.6 it's not very much at all but let's just have a little listen such a small amount such a small amount now next up i've got a couple of eqs both doing slightly different things so this is a clarifonic fantastic mastering eq now again i've just got this doing a little bit to the sides mainly again but really it's just giving it a little bit of a high-end lift just a little bit of shimmer on the top there let's just have a listen to that can probably hear that just a tiny bit more because it's got a little bit more high end getting thrown into the top there next up another eq i used to just use this on a master but now i like the clarifonic as well because the combination of the two i just find gives the mix just a little bit more energy just when you put them together it sounds really good so this one a lot of people do we're just doing at a fairly broad bandwidth we're just chucking in a little bit of a 100 hertz and a little bit at 10k so just a little bit of low end a little bit of high end just helps to kind of bookend the mix a little bit and and you know what it just gives it a little bit more vibe let's have a little listen So you notice that a little bit more because now we've got the accumulation of the high end from the one before and then this one helps to smooth that out a little bit but also brings in a little bit of low end. Next up, a little bit of special sauce. Now the Oxford or Sonox inflator just does something really cool. And with this one, a little goes a long way. It's one of those plugins where you really notice a difference when it's off. You notice what you've lost when you take it away. And to, ex to explain it, 
exactly what it is. I'm just going to show you what it says on a website about what it does. A unique and powerful plugin to increase loudness without sacrificing sonic quality or dynamic range. So it's adding power and presence to your mix without the pumping of compression, blah, 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 blah. Great. Now you can go totally mental with this and that can be really fun for certain elements in your mix. But for the mix bust, you just want to be giving it just a little taste of it. So as you can see, I'm, I've brought the input up by 2dB and I've brought it back down 2dB just to try and match that loudness just to make sure that we're not just adding level some of these do add a tiny bit of level but it's more that it's just adding a little bit of color so let's let's hear what it's doing Now that one, I think you'll notice what it's doing just a little bit more. It's just that, like I say, it's a little bit of special sauce. It's just a little bit more vibe. Now this one I stole off Matthew Wise. I really like what it does. And again, it's a tiny, tiny amount. Now, yes, it's Slate Digital. It's the VBC. It's a virtual bus compressors. Now I've, I've got them all here, but they're actually doing nothing apart from this bottom one down here which is essentially a tube based compressor very similar to a fairchild 670 or or a manly very you so all i'm doing on here you'll notice i'm not actually going to be using the compressor as such i don't want it really to be compressing when you put your mix through a 670 it's going through all of those cables it's going through all the valves and just by the very nature of doing that it's just giving it a little bit of color so that's essentially what you're aiming for with this. Uh, one thing that he did discover, which is quite interesting, is as soon as you put something through it, this actually does bump up the gain by 2 dB. So, so what you want to do is on the makeup gain there, it's just bring it back down by 2 dB and then you should be level matched. So let's just hear what it's doing. Again, not very much. Can you see how it just kind of opens up the mix just a little bit? Almost just gives the whole thing just that little bit more depth. I really like what that does. And it's especially noticeable once you're in the middle of a mix. If you turn that off, it can actually change the sound of it quite drastically. So yeah, so be careful. If you're going to mix with it on, just make sure you leave it on forever. Now, lastly... I use a bus compressor. Now, there are lots of different options that you can use. As it stands for 95% of my mixes, I use this one. This is the Townhouse Bus Compressor by Brainworks. It's a fantastic compressor. It's very, very similar to the SSL bus compressor. So it's just a VCA compressor works in exactly the same way as, as the SSL one does, really. It just has a nice vibe and I like it. So settings wise, ratio of two to one. So attack, so that's at 30 milliseconds fast release and then we're adjusting the threshold to make sure that it's not compressing very much overall so throughout a track in general i'd have it compressing between 2 and 4 db and then have the makeup gain to to get you back to to that level point to bring it back to, to zero if you like but i'll adjust that depending on a track so let's we're going to have a look at a, a couple of parts just to just to see what it's doing because this is a slightly softer part but in a louder part it, it might be acting a little bit more so let's have a look Go with your So you can notice that's doing a little bit more there. Let's, let's just jump to a slightly louder section. Let's try this bit here. It's not going to be drastically louder, but it is going to be slightly different. Okay, so you can hear that that's doing that much more, but you should also notice that it's really starting to glue things together a little bit more. And now it's it's taking all of the EQ that we've got going on, as well as that little bit of special source from the Sonox Inflator, and it's just packaging it up just a little bit nicer. Now, as you noticed on there, I was only compressing maximum of 2 dB, so not very much at all. 
depends on the mix sometimes i'll go a little bit further sometimes i will go up to about four but i definitely won't be going over that now you'll notice that i've actually got a plug-in grayed out here this is another mix bus compressor now it's grayed out because i wasn't using it clearly but sometimes i will sometimes i want a slightly different sound sometimes that townhouse compressor isn't quite cutting it and i need something slightly different now this one is it is a vca compressor and it's it's very similar to a neve 33609 it's not quite the same because there's not really any compressor that sounds exactly like that but it does have a similar vibe and sometimes that's what i need sometimes i need that it's got a very tight and punchy low end but sometimes it can be just a little bit grabby and it does get a little bit aggressive with some of the transients but i have that there just in case i want to try it out sometimes i'm happy with where it mixes but i just want to change it out but I just want to change out that other bus compressor just to see if this hits a little bit better. So, I mean, just have a quick listen whilst we're here. This is this a slightly different. So let's have a little go. <laughs> Sounds great. But then if you just try A, B in between the two and we'll try and see what the difference is and then then you can usually decide from there really so we'll start with the townhouse first now i've set them so they're basically working in a very very similar way and in fact one thing that i forgot to mention which i've set on both of them is this sidechain filter so essentially this one is set to not compress anything below 100 hertz as you'll probably know anyway bass frequencies because they are they're just longer they tend to to suck up a lot of the compression. So if you've got a kick drum or any low end going through, that's going to trigger the compressor first. So it's it's going to make it essentially do a lot of work just for just for the low end. And that means it's 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 going to take a lot more time, a lot more energy to to actually get to the highs. So so what I tend to do is filter it so the low end doesn't get touched and it's just it's just the, the higher frequencies, I mean not even high end, but just just anything from a hundred hertz upwards that actually triggers a compressor. So so I've set that up on both compressors and I'll, and I'll generally do that on any bus compressor that I do. So let's actually have a listen now. Both sounds great, but I find that the townhouse just has a little bit more space in between the notes. There's just a little bit more separation. Even though it's given that glue that we want from it, it's still allowing the separation of the individual elements come through a little bit more. So, so that's why I've gone with it there. But I always leave that in the chain, just usually made inactive, just in case I want to try it out, just in case that works for that particular mix. Now, lastly, a limiter this is generally bypassed some mixing engineers like to keep a limiter on there even if it's just doing a tiny amount just to just to stop any peaks as it stands i don't i just try and manually do that i just make sure that it doesn't peak every now and again i will slip in a limiter just just to do that exact job but as it stands i don't right now but ask me in three months and i might change that that's that's the the, the nature of this you can swap things out as you go so the main reason i have a limiter here is is just to send mixes to the client because of the way the world now the client doesn't want to hear your mix which is at a conservative level before mastering they kind of want to hear your mix master they want it to be loud they want it to be sounding close to what other things sound like already so when i'm going to send a mix for review i'll always chuck on a limiter just to essentially give it some level it's just doing level so as you can see i've got the the out ceiling at minus one just to prevent all the peaks and then and then i'm slamming a little bit of the threshold so let's switch this on just so you can hear how much louder it goes <laughs> Thank you. 
Beautiful. Sounds great when it's louder, doesn't it? Everything always just sounds greater when it's louder. And now let's just have a quick listen, a quick before and after, as I'll take all of those plugins off and uh, and bring it all back in just so you can hear what they do. Because the main point of this is the accumulation. And there you go. So obviously you can hear that it did get louder because that is a bit of an accumulation of different processes. But all of these go on at the beginning of the mix. So it's not something that you chuck on your mix at the end. That's what's that's quite important. This is just something that sets the tone of your mix. And especially with the bus compressor on there, that's what's actually giving you the glue. Everything else is adding a little bit of special source, a little bit of the highs and the lows and essentially bookending your mix a little bit. And that's it. So that is my mix bus chain. As I said before, each plugin is just doing a tiny amount. It's just adding a little bit of color here and there. And one of the main things about actually having that is it will prevent you from getting as many surprises when you send it off to a mastering engineer because it's it, it's already a, a sound. It's already got the, the colors and the flavors and the, the amount of compression essentially that you want in your mix. You're already hearing that movement. If you don't have a little bit of comp bus compression on your mix, when you hear that at the end it's going to change your mix sometimes a fair bit and it might make you want to then have to go back to the mix and adjust things because now different things are popping out all over the place that you weren't expecting so this just helps to to package your mix right from the start and helps you to craft the sound that, that you're wanting from the beginning and there you go that's that for now thank you very much for listening i'll see you next time